Hello and welcome back. There's been a lot of big changes in the studio. We've moved spaces, so we apologize for the delay, but we are back and we are excited to see you here. When last we left off, as it's been a bit of time just to bring everybody up to speed, we had left off with a merfolk ambush of the encampment where Willow had just dove beneath a wagon. Tink uh, was groggily uh, pointing down the end of a crossbow at a uh, recently discovered and caught out in the uh, open merfolk. Eamon's still gently asleep, and uh, poor Guck is just scrubbing the sleep out of his eyes. Ruined beauty sleep. Mm -hmm. He needs as much as he can get. It's unfortunate, <laughs> but it is the way things are. <laughs> So I believe it might be best to pick up from the top. The last statement on the table was, who goes there? All right, sugar, but if you, if you think you happen to be in the, the negotiating mood, I believe this might be a longer story than the end of that crossbow bolt. He's got a southern draw. <laughs> I'm working it. It's hard. <laughs> Not a thing I do very often, but I'm working for you folks. Every time. It's so hard. So you come up on our caravan, then you ask us to negotiate. What are you doing? What, what's your purpose here? It's 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 complicated. If you if you are amenable to discourse, if you are willing to... Two big words. Cut cut to the chase. <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying. We're looking for something particular, but we don't want to hurt nobody. What are you looking for? You see a lot of emotions flashing over her face. She's she's having a lot of in, like soul-searching and deciding, like, how do I approach this? And she uh, says... My, my people are not a landlocked folk, but something of deep cultural significance was stolen, and we believe it was by the gentleman that owns these there convoys. As this is going on, I'm getting out of my tent, and I'm like pulling up my pants and like falling over, trying to get ready real fast. <laughs> <laughs> he just slapped dashing his, his chain mail together. He's like... <laughs> what leads you to believe that the person running this caravan is the person that, that, that took this artifact of yours? It was, it was absconded with by one of the devices that they've been using for their, their fashion. And my, my feeling is... If he doesn't know what it is, he may not know what he may be doing to us. But if he does, it puts us in a kind of tricky position. I don't know how much I can tell you folk about my culture. It, it makes it difficult for me to explain exactly how much of a difficulty this places my people in. Well, you're difficult to... Difficulty to tell me what's going on is making it pretty difficult to lower the end of this crossbow bolt. So wh why don't we start off with you tell me exactly should, where you're coming from and why you're here. We should have them all come out into the light so we can see who, how many we're working with here. Yeah, step forward. Show, show me your face. <clears throat> uh, you see her. Like, you see her start walking forward, and then you hear her utter uh, complicated sort of like pops and clicks. Um, seems like it's a, a language that likely none of you speak. Um, then two other people, uh, begin coming out of the brush to you. Now, do these guys look like they're dogs fart? Uh, <laughs> do either of these guys that are, well, do any of these people look like they're, like, physically, like, adept, like they're built for combat, or do they seem pretty... Describe frail? their outfits to us. Uh, so, as a general rule, uh, mermaids suffer from a rather specific amount of sexual dimorphism. So yes, there's there's two men that come out that are much more heavily muscled and larger than uh, the female in front of you. Uh, 
they seem like they could throw down in the scrap. Uh, just looking at them, they don't walk like someone who religiously murders people. I'm not sure exactly how deep I can describe it. Like they, look... they don't walk like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they walk like people who are are willing to fight but aren't exactly like deeply trained. Okay, I have two questions for them. Who is it that they think took their stuff? Because they keep saying he. Do they know it's the person we think it is? This is me. I feel like I have a problem where I'm asking the DM. I'm asking them, who do you think sent us with your stuff? Many moons ago, we entered into a trade agreement with uh, one one Draken, who, who parlayed himself as a... Uh, Tongue easy. <laughs> a, a, as an entrepreneur, a, a doer of things, and uh, just an overall reasonable gentleman. We thought that they would abide by the agreement we put forth. But they didn't. They didn't. Oh my god. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, that just hit me. It's bad. Oh, I thought my, I thought my, draw, I thought my draw was really drawing. No, no, that was <laughs> dog <laughs> farts rolled in. <laughs> I haven't like, like the map. first one it's hit this whole time. It's been bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I'm going to drive my place of honor far from there. <laughs> okay, my other question is can you. You're struggling with your words. Can you just tell us something to identify the object so we can help you look for it if we come to the conclusion you are trustworthy? It would be, as far as uh, you could tell, uh, a satchel. It's mildly magical. It would be about a meter in size, and it would be slightly leathery. And blue. Oh God! Look for a bag out in the, in the back of the cart. I'll go. I'll go search the back of the cart. Now, you three, state your names for us. They start clicking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you can call hmm. The gentleman you can call Flotsam and Jetsam. What? Oh, Excellent. Yeah, mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> and, and apparently there's some sort of si cultural significance to that statement, but perhaps uh, I, I shan't be called Ursula today. <laughs> Her oh. name is Ursula? <laughs> uh, no, I was going to, but I, I feel like you guys would, would decide some certain things. Uh, <laughs> um, Elatea. Uh, write down my best interpretation of it. Made up how I would spell it. Do I find anything in the in the bag? You don't find any bags in the back. Um, she watches as you start leaping through. She again has kind of a con concentration on her face. It's going to be a bit more organic than that. I don't like the sound of that. It's like, I mean, you had an organic bag. So at this point, like, you were, I guess, out of game and in game. So you have to realize that there's a certain amount of uh, a certain amount of withholding that she's doing. She's trying to give a general idea, but not give away all of the information that she knows. So you guys could, I mean, you could roll a sense motive. You could roll an investigate check to try and figure yeah, out if she's I'll lying to you, or if she's just obscuring, or you could roll a diplomacy check to try and encourage her, Somebody or else. intimidate, by the way. You could also roll so, intimidate to encourage her to give more forthright information. Somebody want to investigate that? Mine's zero. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, so it still seems like you're hiding a bit from us, and we've done you the kindness that I haven't pulled this trigger yet. We, we, Very we've kind. done. Very diplomatic. We, we've been willing to talk this whole time, and you're still trying to hide all this information. So, we all right, fine. You, you seem like fine enough folk, and you all seem like adults. So you're familiar with the the birds and the bees. All right. Do elaborate. <laughs> Duck goes. I know. Tell them though. All right. So, uh, reproduction. Just generally. The, and then he uh, leans in like. 
Uh, this wasn't going to be a, 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 an illustrative lesson, sir, but all right. So, a general reproduction for your species. Mine does not work that way. So we have eggs, like other fish might. Egg sac. It's your egg sac. Start sweating a little bit. <laughs> Fan self out, puts finger back on trigger. It's a special one, and... It's like... I can't divulge all of the details about it, but if we don't get it back, the future of my people will be inalterably changed for the negative. It's the entire next generation of merfolk in one sec. All right, I go, I go look the, through the back of the cart for an egg sack. <laughs> Or well, what look. I would interpret an egg sack to look like. <laughs> Don't we have, is everything like canned that we have? Uh, yes, yeah, so you have quite a few uh, containers. Um, you have the means and time to break them apart. I was going to say open every can. Is anything listed as caviar? <laughs> it's just all caviar. Well, we as we know, I thing. can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the right person to look through it. <laughs> I would like to go out on a limb and go in the back of the caravan and do a nature check to see if I can notice anything egg Try like. To suss it out. I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. Roll a nature check. Roll a nature check. No, it's 20. 20. That's an exceptional. Wow, you had that in your pocket. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You <laughs> had that one canned <laughs> about you. <laughs> What other way that roll ended up? That's an exceptionally <laughs> bad roll. I feel like, I feel like that one can. I feel like he had it ready. Uh, all right. So with a 20... Um, roll a wisdom check for me as well. Um, 14. So you kind of just sit in the cart and you just you relax, you meditate, you're just feeling them out. You recognize that overall the containers themselves are pretty uh, average sized, but there are six of them that are larger. Okay. Guck, open, large can. Oh, I just punch into the can. They're, they're crates, but yeah, you can just punch Open, right. large crates. I punch right into that crate. Don't punch, Guck. <laughs> Back. That's how I open things. <laughs> uh, so you, the two of you, uh, grab uh, a couple of the cart containers out, um, and you you smash through the first one, and uh, mechanically separated and processed fish uh, slide out of the side of the cage. Uh, a good portion of uh, ice as well. Um, that leaves five. More. I'm going to punch it through the rest of it. Oh my god. <laughs> I give Guck insane side eye and I just start taking the lids off the crate. <laughs> I just start <laughs> Even though when she's got a lid off of I punch the side of it. <laughs> so the, uh, the general structure integrity of the, the sides uh, survives the, the, the rocky elbow and aggression. <laughs> Can we say that? Is that license? Is that uh, is that trademark point that we're gonna get in trouble for? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you just you just go ham on the boxes. Uh, you open the last one, and uh, you note that something seems off about them. About them, as in, like fish in it. Roll a will save. A what? So a will well. save. Sorry. That would be a, a wisdom save. Okay. Nine, 19. Wait. Oh, four. Uh, 21. 21. Look at you, high roller. All right. Um, so you recognize that two of them have been clo cloaked with illusion magic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way for us to dispel this magic? Uh, it is wisdom to disbelieve. You're the one with the high wisdom over here. I so see inside the ones that have been cloaked with illusion magic, you recognize that they actually do have something similar to what she was describing. All right, well, in the, thingy. in the midst of all this, I'm just going to ask them, 
What purpose would Draken have to, to take this this egg sack from you? This, this satchel. Why, why do you think he wants it? Well, she said he might not know. But now that there's illusion on it, I am inclined to disagree. He may not know all about what it may entail. We try and keep a lot of information about how our society is run a little separate so that people don't have the ability to unduly influence us. I will make the statement as plain as possible with what I am comfortable saying, but if he knew that owning that would give him that ability and chose to abuse it, we would not be able to do anything about that. We would not be able to resist it. You saying that he'd be able to control you? Does, does, this, does this give him some sort of power over you? Some authority? As the generation next, he would have that authority. He would be their mother. Oh, yeah, it gives that Literally, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, Can we just okay. get this thing back? Then? Here's my gut feeling. I don't like city folk. I don't like this guy that is using illusion spells on the things we kindly offer to transport for him. I trust the merfolk for some reason. Let's be honest. If we give this back to the merfolk and they somehow betray us, I'm going to fuck them up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ready I see no problems with giving it back. Or at least for right now, I think we should put it in front of them and see if they can do anything to identify it. Because I don't let's, know. Let's find just out having, like, somebody who talks better. Pretty much at this point, I don't feel like I'm unable to like break the spell necessarily. Let's let's have somebody who talks a little better relay and figure out what exactly their deal was with Dragonsmith. So, one Let thing me I'm... talk. <laughs> Oh, okay. that you think oh, Will Thounds? <laughs> he went southern all of a sudden. <laughs> We're like, working on it. He's suddenly an old man. Why, <laughs> 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 Nip? Well, maybe you should. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just had a quite. I'm, I'm curious. So, if this is if this has to do with how you all pre reproduce. Does does this normally take a pretty lengthy amount of time? How what is the typical cycle for for merfolk to try to like? Is he really going to have some sort of dominion over you if if he keeps these egg sacs or like? Is it pretty infrequent that you guys reproduce? Okay, to be fair, we're assuming they're eggs, but now she's saying it also gives this guy power. So I don't know if she's going to divulge all the details of the power giving element. Assuming you guys didn't walk away to have that conversation. As we're just right in front of her. We're like, this bitch ain't telling us shit. <laughs> to answer your general query, it would give him no particular power over myself or my kin. Okay. It would, however... It would, however... He could raise his own army of mere folk kind of things. Is what my assumption is. There is a certain element to that. This one specifically is special because it may in fact be the last that the queen is able to deliver. Like a new queen. I don't know. I feel like they're pretty nice. We might just want to give this to, I, back to them. I, I'm, I'm fucking with the world. But we need to know what their original deal was. Part of the reason I was asking if, if these satchels, these egg sacks, if they're pretty infrequent to come by, I was wondering... Do they caravan these often, or would you believe that they would caravan them often? If you believe that these people aren't to be trusted, are you trying to are you trying to figure out what they're trying to do with these sacks? Are you trying to figure out what they know about them, or are you just trying to to get it back? We're trying to get it back. At this at this juncture, we were able to collect and hide the other ones much better, but we were not prepared for how swiftly his. Uh, trawling ships would be able to get through our territory and we thought we had a nice isolated grotto that we would be able to have these in um, and go through their natural process but it was in fact not the case it was either a lucky drop or someone who perhaps followed us in, a, in, a, in an untoward fashion but they wound up finding these ones um, 
Let me ask a question. I'm switching sides so fast. I like the merfolk. I don't like thieves or breakers of the natural cycle of having their own children. <laughs> this is so rude. Um, have you? Because we're 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 trying to find people that have like robbed caravans before, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask you up front not to like cause any trouble for you. Have you come and looked for your satchels in caravans previously? Because we were told that this has been happening. Yes. Once we found okay. out the likely cause of, of the disappearance of the eggs, um, and I might, I might at least soften your your distaste for the gentleman, as it were. The part of the agreement was uh, with his access to surface ships and their their natural ability to have that extra technology behind it. They were in fact driving away lots of our natural predators, okay. sharks and whales and things that may otherwise. Uh, causes harm or predate our area, they've pretty well pushed them outside of our natural territory, and it has been generally advantageous. They've not deeply shown an interest in breaking the covenant between us. All right, so what I'm thinking is we give this thing back to them, we get our shipment to the next town, wherever it's supposed to go, and we still get paid, guys. Okay, but if just... they don't pay us, whew, that's going to be the sweet time. <laughs> so, do you believe that they know what, that Draken knows what he is in possession over, and to follow on that, if it if he were to lose it, do you believe that there would be a show of force to try to retrieve it? I don't know that I could properly speak to the mind of a man that I do not know that well, but I can say that overall, it isn't impossible that he could surmise the general purpose of these items. Given enough time and examination, you could come to the general conclusion of what this might, in fact, be. Right. Okay, so... do So um, we have a map that we're following for this caravan. So where... Do we have a exact, like, locale that we're trying to take this to? This is what I'm thinking, too. Even if Drake and Smith doesn't know what he's doing necessarily he might be bringing it to someone that's kind of like been like mm -hmm. hey bring these things for no reason at all mm -hmm. yes yeah, so do we know exactly where we're taking this to or was this trip more so just to try to so you just do, no uh, set up an ambush figure out what's going on actually yeah it's been about three and a half weeks or more so you guys may not always remember all those details so just to do a quick recap and bring up speed uh yes yeah, so you do know where your destination was you do know that overall he suspected that there was an ambush he didn't say that absolutely would happen um but he hired you on as additional security so mm -hmm. with i mean if you want to roll as like to see what your character decides or you as a human you just want to like take the information um and, and decide what you think that's fine either way um but you know that the destination is the uh railroad junction um that he's hoping to have extended so this is all information that you were given in character about the whole situation so you know where the destination is you know the overall overall goal was to protect the caravan and then deliver it as a matter of commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's well, let's just give this shit back. I agree, but I'm also sure, I can't remember. Are we supposed to like meet someone there when we arrive? Yeah, point of contact. What I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of the people we that we're delivering. I, so to. I didn't state it, and we didn't establish it. Okay. Um, okay. Roll. Hmm, roll up scenario. We just roll a, a two D one two D tens, and we'll figure out if it's uh, an over under. If it's uh, reasonable that he established a point of contact. Twenty five. Twenty five percent. No, he didn't specify any particular <laughs> point of contact. Um, it would have just been something he presumed that you would get Lehman there, and Lehman would uh, satisfy the end of his contract. Should we question and... Lehman and figure out what he thinks? Well, just ask him what he knows. Hey, Lehman, who are we meeting when we're there? Where's Lehman this whole time? We're just talking more folks. He's, he's just, just out like... of the car. <laughs> uh, well, uh, um, so... He was also asleep, um, uh, and then he was, he was uh, affected by the magical sleep, so... Overall, he's been just kind of peacefully dreaming. None of you opted to wake him up. <laughs> I know I've been shouting, so it's not like... The conversation itself is loud enough that it would yeah. wake the person who's peaceably sleeping in normal conditions. I'm going to go just grab Leland out of his bed and just kind of toss him over in front of uh, Tinker over here. 
And now I'm going to slowly, I'm still going to keep my eyes, like, on the three merfolk. But I'm going to list my crossbow and point it over in the direction of Leland now. Oh. Is, is he still sleeping under this magical spell after being tossed, or is he conscious now? And so it's been well over a minute, so he wouldn't be asleep on the natural uh, course of the spell, but he was quite regularly asleep. Uh, and as his uh, body is lifted from the earth, and then yeeted... Toss, not, a, not a yeet, yeeted. but a gentle toss to the ground. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you for specifying, because originally I was just thinking you were just like, yeah. just shuttle just kind of grabbed him by the pants and shirt and just gave him a little, eh. <laughs> I was thinking you were, there was a little bit more like energetic grunting at the end of the No, it was not a gah! <laughs> <laughs> Leland's back is broken, we're like... <laughs> hey, man, the job. Uh, ambush. The danger of the ambush. Uh, so, y it's still enough, though, to, uh, having been lifted up the earth, and then kind of, like, sh roughly sh shoved to the ground, uh, when his head snaps back, his eyes open, and he's like, ah! <laughs> I'm just gonna look at him, I'm just gonna say, tell me everything you know about this caravan right now. Am I being robbed? <laughs> You're being questioned, good sir. We're all friends here. Just let me. Just tell me what you know. Uh, if you brew a tea with lavender and you drink it when you have an upset stomach, it'll make you feel better. Ginger is also an excellent choice. Um, Get more specific. <laughs> Do you know what we're transporting in this caravan? Uh, a lot of packed fish goods. Do you know who we're taking it to when we arrive at the city? Oh. Um, Orin Jenton. Orin Jenton? <laughs> His name, name Orin. is this. Last, Last name Jenton. <laughs> Orin. Who he be? Jenton. Who he be? Uh, uh, he, he be... <laughs> he is, uh, the, uh, the, the guy who loads the cargo onto the train. Oh, okay. Where does the train just say? common folk. Where does the train go? Where walk? train go? Where train go? <laughs> Eventually to the capital. Right. Yes. Okay. Do you think there's supply I'm... fishmen army to the capital or something? No, I think there's someone in power in the capital, obviously, that is trying to, like, overpower the merfolk and potentially other groups. Well, this egg is clearly important to that because... Sentence. Would I be able to roll, like, a history check or something along those lines to figure out, like, if there's, like, in this realm, if there's a history of Merkle, like, being trapped like, a slave trade or something? That and would or... absolutely be a history or society check, whichever okay. happens to you. I feel like this egg sack thing that they're looking for is clearly, like, a new queen that can lay more eggs kind of thing. Well, to get this in their I mean, last thing. It's what the is, crown it's, prince yeah, or princess. Just, so if they're sending this to the capital, they're trying to make more... What if more it's, like, a, uh, like a bag? 17. What if the bag's, 17. like, a little bundle and it's just got, like, a merfolk baby in it? <laughs> uh, so the 17... You don't really have any uh, historical reference uh, to slave trade between the capital or generally anyone with the merfolk. Um, with the 17, you'd also understand that they really wouldn't be all that suitable as slaves because they can only survive a certain amount of time on mm -hmm. land. Um, mm -hmm. They could be used for super, really specific, specialized things if you could figure out how to enslave them properly. But you'd also have to, at that point, have someone in the water to watch them mm -hmm. who's willing to also uh, enslave them. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be one of those things where it's a net sum zero because you'd have to have two levels of specialized people to keep that in motion. Okay, so now, I don't know if I'd require another role for this, but if I would know if like a fertilized egg sac, like pre-hatching, if it has any sort of like magical properties, any sort of value that would lend itself to, like, being valuable in trade. Mm. That's kind of Are a difficult of, one. Like, Let's go with... Um, magical essence. They can take it. This is actually pretty deeply speculative with the level of knowledge you might have for a more folk society. Mm -hmm. Roll a general intelligence check. We're going to set that up at a... Come point. on, that's one. Uh, 19. 
you don't feel that you know enough to state that as a reality. But you just learned like the birth of the bees. <laughs> you feel like that's the kind of thing that could absolutely happen dependent on how their reproduction is done. Mm. Um, what's your intelligence? It is a 15, so plus three. Okay, could you... Do, do you... Do you happen to know anything about the politicians or any people in power in the capital? Are you asking that to Lehman or to Tink? If, if Tink knows. Or I guess we could ask Lehman. Tink doesn't know. Well, wait, what'd you ask? I'm sorry. Do you know anything about like the politicians or people in power in the capital? <laughs> can I roll? You can. Is this going to be history, insight, something? That would be history at this uh, point. Seven. Seven. Oof. Do I know anything about history? You can't even read. <laughs> you know, history. Okay. So, with the seven, you don't really know anything aside from the fact that it's a parliamentary mon monarchy. So, okay. that's about all you really know about it. I would like to see if I know anything. I just assumed I wouldn't for part of my backstory because I'm from like, that's not much better, but 10. A 10. Uh, not really much more available to you. You kind of just leaf through things that you've heard on your travels. You don't recall anything more particular about how that parliamentary uh, system is set up. Okay. I'm not um, so all we can do is speculate. <laughs> I'm a knight from an island nation who can't read. I'm not right. going to try to understand that. I'm going to I'm going to look back over at the Merfolk, but this time I'm I'm going to lower my crossbow, try to show them that. So my guard has been lowered. When I ask them, so if this is the last of what your queen might be able to produce, do you think it might be possible for us to to speak to her? I know, I'm assuming she lives underwater, but is there any sort of possible way that land dwellers are able to to visit you guys where, where you reside? Land dwellers? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, are you surprised? <laughs> we do have mechanisms in place for, for such. It's not... A uh, trivial matter, but if you wish to have an audience, if this is something that you would find exceptionally valuable, we could work on arranging that. Is there anything particular you wanted to discuss with us? With you? Do you? Maybe not so much. With the queen? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> All right, then I see. I see. I of course I see that. It's like I forgot I'm from the country. <laughs> Man, I, I'm gonna tell you right now. This is this is hard. For me. It's so hard. It's better, better in Savannah. It's better. Better. <laughs> so, I'm a client. Here's my thought right now. I, if my party agrees, I'm very willing to give you your sack back. Whatever it may be. <laughs> However, I, okay, I think we should finish our mission because I'm sure you guys want the gold as mercenaries after we just deliver the caravan safely. If you guys feel like you might need any further assistance to prevent more theft or anything like that, we feel like we may be an asset to the queen to help you achieve that goal. For gold. Wings, <laughs> <laughs> warriors. I like gold. <laughs> I feel I could offer some armistice for that. So yes, if you are willing to follow us back to our encampment, I believe I can uh, give you something as a reward and also as a token of goodwill as it would ensure our inability to continue harassing the caravans. Okay, sounds good to me. I guess let's look at the party and I'll ask you guys want to... You want to transport this caravan first, or you want to go visit the Merfolk? Pick me. <laughs> uh, uh, Avon. Ah, I'm real confused at what we should do, but this lady been telling us pretty good inside, so let's go with what she's got to say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even share something. Like, okay. this, is, this is some real special water. And blessed by a, a priest. And, and, and that's why I always tell you. It's a glacier. It's a glacier. It's always tell you. Well, I, I, I seem to remember the time when we all showed up and then the mud dogs won the bourbon bowl. I'm going I'm to just grab Lee by the back of the shirt and just kind of dust him off poorly and just kind of sit him back up on top of the... Care about. Okay, I'll sit right here. Then. 
You're not Lehman. <laughs> I'm just real confused about it. Well, he goes to sit on Lehman flat. <laughs> I'll just sit right here then. And then oh. I'm just going to go saddle up on Lil Guck. All right. So, uh, I'll the so you mount up and uh, you decide to go ahead and follow him. So on the okay. map where you had the grotto, the, the oasis, uh, you guys actually follow them there and you find uh, an encampment. It's, uh, hastily put together, but it overall, um, almost none of it appears on land. Uh, you see her wade in, and you see that there's actually another individual there in the water. Um, but she swims up and grabs a bottle um, from the bottom of the little oasis that they're sitting near and uh, delivers it to you. This here is. In fact, one of the only reasons we're able to subsist and persist here. This is a artifact that my people have created that uh, we call the Ever-Flowing Ewer. Um, we've altered it a bit, and I'm sure you could alter it back, uh, but it now is able to unleash a near unlimited amount of salt water. Unleash an unlimited amount of salt water. Uh, which we've been using to rest and recuperate while we are watching the caravan route to see when it may in fact arrive. That's right. Yeah, so it lets them go on land is what we're getting at here. Okay. So we need to change it to air so we can go down and talk to them. But well, actually you can just change it to fresh water or you just leave it back. Um, so out of character, uh, an flowing Ewer has essentially two settings. One, it just pours out uh, like a jug of water, um, but two, once you've uh, attuned it, you can actually unleash a torrent of water okay, okay, uh, okay. that will uh, enact a force uh, a strength check on someone at the other end of it and can actually knock them down. I want that. <laughs> I want the super soaker. <laughs> My eyes start yes, yes, widening when he's explaining him. <laughs> <laughs> but you might inadvertently take a bath with it. My strength oh, no. is pretty high. Well, <laughs> it's not that high, but I, I trust <laughs> myself. Um, thanks. Yes, this is as a as a token of goodwill, and she trades. She essentially like puts that down, and then they take the uh, the crate with the egg sacs in it. Um, at this point. We're going to hide these in a much more uh, functional locale, and we'll go ahead and make sure that they're never found again, but we are now unable uh, to be here. We have just enough time um, to get back to the water, um, so we can't and shan't return. While they're doing this, I'm just going to run over to the ewer and be like, Dams, and just grab it. <laughs> okay. Uh, How do I tune to this thing? It's, you just own it for a second. I'm just looking yeah, at my... uh, giant item. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and uh, roll a d6 for me. Six. It goes off in your hand. <laughs> and you know, or just like campaign pounding water. I'm just directing it, going around like flying. <laughs> I miss... oh While this conversation's happening, I'm just in the background, just wee! <laughs> <laughs> it's like propelling him into the sky a little bit. Um, okay. Right. And after this, we'll go for a short intermission. Okay. What, was, what was it called again? A Ewer of Endless Water. It's a 3-5 item, I'm pretty sure it still exists in 5th edition, but it's one of the more fun ones because it can be used in interesting ways if you just kind of... Or if you ever just need water for whatever reason, you have water. Guys, I'm a water mancer now. <laughs> <laughs> I am a water bender. Um, I thank them, and I we tell them, if you ever need any help, if you have any further problems, we're the wage warriors. <laughs> And then in the back, as I'm flying around, just wage warriors! Hands <laughs> <laughs> them a business card. <laughs> just promptly gets for... soaked by water and ruin, so it's not legible anymore. <laughs> now, do you guys have a. If we need it to, since we're.
Thank you guys for stopping by. This has been the Shroud of the Sun through the New School Project. You can follow us on all major socials, and I hope you have a lovely day.